So the other day I had to go almost all the way to the Idaho border and I drove west on Highway 2 out of the Flathead Valley. And in this video I'm going to show you the towns of Libby and Troy and everything in between. So we'll actually start this tour on the west end coming from Troy back towards the Flathead Valley. So when you get into Troy you come down a big hill and Troy is actually the lowest town elevation wise in all of Montana at only 1800 feet. So it gets pretty warm here in the summer and uh, it actually is warm in the winter as well because of the elevation. It sits right along the Kootenai River and the real estate around Troy is a little cheaper than the rest of the areas I've been showing you. Um, so far this year they've had 42 houses that have sold in Troy. And they've ranged from $85,000 for a small house right in town. And the most expensive sale in Troy was $675,000 for a two-bedroom, two-bathroom house that was on four acres. And it was actually on the Kootenai River. So as we go through town here, you can see it's not very big. Uh, they have all the grocery stores and regular little tourist spots for fishermen and people there in the summer. Uh, the population of Troy is just under a thousand people and it doesn't take you very long to get through town as you can see. And the day I was there, you can see out in the distance out there and I'll show it to you a little closer, you could actually see the fire that had been burning. But before we get to that, Troy is the last town you're going to hit before you get to the Idaho border. And as you can see on the left here, this is the Troy High School. And again, located right along the river. So back to the fire, this is called the South Yak Fire. And up until this point, it's burned 12,500 acres. And even to this day, it's only 62% contained. And there's 215 people working on this fire. You can see the helicopter and some guys right there. And this fire was caused by lightning. It was naturally caused. And hopefully they'll get it out soon. Otherwise, it'll be like another most of the fires here in winter will put it out. So one of the cool things to see between Troy and Libby as you're heading east now is the Kootenai Falls. And these falls are just an awesome force of nature. Uh, it actually The river actually loses 300 feet of elevation in just a few hundred yards. And that's what creates these falls. And if you've seen the movie back in the 90s called The River Wild or a more current movie called The Revenant, they actually filmed those movies right here using those falls uh, for the movie. And so they may look familiar to you, but just a great spot to stop at. It's right along the highway in between Libby and Troy. And there's trails that take you down to the falls that I just showed you. And then there's also this swinging bridge that you can take to get to the other side of the river. So as you can see, there's great photo opportunities all over and wherever you walk, no matter which side of the river you are on. So if you're ever in this area, you should definitely check this out. This is one of the great Montana landmarks. So after you leave Kootenai Falls and continue east, you'll hit the town of Libby which has a population of uh, about 2,850 people. And the real estate around Libby, again, is a little cheaper, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But over the past year, they've sold 117 homes in, in the immediate Libby area. And they ranged in price from 45000 for a manufactured home right in town, all the way up to 630000 for a three-bedroom, two-bath house that's on 15 acres uh, on the river with 1,400 foot, 1400 feet of river frontage. And the reason things are cheaper in Libby, Libby's a beautiful area. Just north of town, you have the Libby Dam, and that's what creates the Kukanusa Reservoir that I've showed you in other videos, the one about Eureka. The, the reservoir goes all the way from Libby all the way up into Canada, and it gets the name from the Kootenai River, Canada, and the USA, so Kukanusa. But Libby's had a kind of a rough history. Libby was built upon mining and they had a big asbestos or excuse me, they had a big vermiculite mine in town. 
And in 1963, the mine was producing 80% of the vermiculite in the world. Well, the vermiculite here in Libby contains asbestos. And what they were doing, the mine was doing, is putting all of these byproducts of the mine all around town. They were using it to insulate houses. They were putting on the track at the high school. They were, you know, using the vermiculite in gardens. Uh, it was just a bad, bad deal. In fact, 10% of the population of Libby ended up with lung cancer from all this, and they actually died from this asbestos contamination. So in 2009, the EPA declared a public health emergency that covered all of Libby, and it, it provided $130 million in cleanup. And then uh, in by 2015, the EPA made it a Superfund site, and they, they spent $425 million cleaning up everything. So there's actually a, a EPA office right in Libby, and I've sold a few houses up there, and you can go into this office, and everything's been cleaned up now. They've finished getting rid of everything. They've hauled uh, tons and tons of soil out of Libby, and they put it back in the mine is where they're, you know, getting rid of all this contaminated soil that they took out of town. But like I said, uh, you can go to that office in town if you're looking at buying something there, and they have records of every house in and around Libby that they've done the cleanup on, and you can find out exactly what was done to that house, what they took out of it, and how it stands now. So as you head east out of Libby towards the Flathead Valley, there's really not a lot. Uh, I did a video a while back where I went from the Flathead Valley as far west as Marion. And from Libby to Marion uh, is about 70 miles. And it's very rural out here. There's just, there's really not a lot at all. So if you're trying to get away from the, the rat race, this is a, a good place to be. Uh, as you can see, there's lakes all the way down the right hand side pretty much all the way uh, to Marion it seems like there's there's all kinds of lakes and there's one little town and I don't know if you'd even call it a town right here it's called Happy's Inn and it basically consists of two little bars I think there's a gas station on the one and the other one's just a bar but it's a good stopping point out here there's really nothing else out here so if you need gas or something to eat this is the place to stop and again as you as you head down highway 2 uh, you'll go past numerous lakes uh, we went past loon lake earlier there's horseshoe lake uh, crystal lake is right right behind happy's in there and then you hit the thompson chain of lakes you have upper thompson middle thompson and lower thompson lake and once you get almost all the way to Marion, uh, you run into McGregor Lake. And McGregor Lake is a very big lake um, and great for camping, fishing. A lot of people go out here. And in uh, along uh, McGregor Lake, there's a great lodge, the, the McGregor Lake Lodge. It has a restaurant, a campground, and the place is open year-round. So if you're ever in this area, you can go here any time of the year. Thank you for watching our video. Please call, text, or email for more information. And don't forget to watch our other videos about Montana.